What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we do upload PvP content every single day. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you're into that type of content. Today we're going to be taking a look at Shadow Polytoad and see if it's any good in PvP. Now, I do prefer Polyrath, however, when checking the IVs for this, Polytoad actually was much better for this specific IV set than Polyrath, so I decided to just go with Polytoad. However, it does not have Earthquake, which is Legacy, but Blizzard from the Altair should be fine. Here you can see this first matchup. I am leading with the Mantine. Pony brought in the Toxicroak, switched out into Defense Deoxys, and I actually bring in Alolan Marowak, which obviously isn't the best counter because the Rock Slides are going to hurt, but I do have that Shadow Wall bait at least. Um, there isn't really anything on this team that could handle Defense Deoxys looking at it now. Uh, Marowak is probably the best counter, so it does involve using shields, but I can win this matchup, of course. But a lot of it actually does come down to baiting with Bone Club and landing the Shadow Ball at the end in the two shield situation. So here I tried to actually go for the Shadow Ball on the second attempt, it didn't work, and we're going to just let the Marowak go down instead. And now I'm going to bring in the Politoed. And as you can see, Polytoad is aggressively looking down the opponent. I'm gonna go for the Surf. Now the good thing about Mudshot is that these Surfs are going to generate very quickly. And the Deoxys actually tanks that. So if this is a Thunderbolt, I of course would have to shield. It ends up being a Rock Slide, which I can tank. And our opponent's going to bring back in the Toxicroak here. And I'm just gonna keep trying to spam these Surfs. And I do have the Manatine in the back, which I'm going to bring out. And Mantine, as we saw in the last video, performs really well and is just super spammy and that bubble beam can get really annoying for opponents lowering the attack. So he actually does have a Registeel here. So I'm going to just bubble beam this down. Uh, he can't switch out anymore because it is his last Pokemon. So as a result of that, or no, it's not his last Pokemon actually, he can't switch out, which will allow him to reset the debuff. So. These bubble beams aren't going to be great in that sense that he will be able to reset the debuff. However, uh, they still do, well they don't do a chunk of damage, but at least they're taking the Registeel's health down, I suppose. But in this situation here, um, I'm just trying to stall the time here and basically be able to bring in the Politoed and hopefully beat the Registeel to the Surf. So if I could put this Registeel low enough in a range where it could get knocked out by the Politoed will be in a really good spot. I do expect the Sack Swap to come out soon, it comes here actually. And this is a really good swap on their part because they do catch this Bubble Beam, which means that I'm going to be very unlikely to get another one onto this Registeel. But as you see, I did manage to get to it. Only problem here is that it looks like this Registeel is possibly now in farm down range of my Manti, so I do switch out. And I have a shield, so I'm going to use it now on the Politoed. And because he just uses energy, I'm pretty sure I get to the Surf before he does. I see I get there, but uh, it looks like we CMP tie, which definitely should not be the case because Politoed definitely has a higher attack stat than the Registeel, so I'm not sure what happened there. I might have overtapped possibly. And uh, because I didn't land that Surf, that's actually going to cost me this game. So I end up losing that, um, probably because I, I guess I overtapped, so a little bit unfortunate there. Sai Sensei is up next. and. You know, team played pretty well in that first matchup. Now here gets Mantine, this is obviously a very good scenario for us because we're running wing attack. So as you can see, those wing attacks are really chunking away here. And I'm definitely gonna shield up this first charge just because this one's gonna do the most damage. And a little bit surprised here, our opponent's not switching out actually. And I decided to go for the knockout here with the Ice Beam. And our opponent does shield. Um, I think going for bubble there might make a little bit more sense just because these leaf blades are still going to hurt actually as you can see there they do about 33 percent of our health which is not great and um but if he didn't shield of course the ice would ko so that leaf blade would come through so it's kind of just you know brain and trying to think what your opponent's going to do or not uh, in that case i thought he probably wouldn't shield so uh we didn't get it through but we do end up losing that Original matchup, but we maintain a shield advantage, so I bring out the Marowak here. 
and because shields are down I will be able to land this shadow ball I do choose to burn the shield here on this uh, whisk hatch though and once I go for the shadow ball I'm going to switch out into the polytoad immediately uh, these mud bombs are going to hurt the lone marowak of course so I don't want to be stuck in this matchup bringing the polytoad here and we're met by another registeel again and this isn't the worst matchup for polytoad to be honest of course it'd be a lot better if I had earthquake because at this point I could just go for earthquake and one shot this registeel and my idea is that the opponent must not know that Politoke could run Earthquake, or he possibly thinks that uh, because it's Legacy that we don't have it. So uh, either way, as you can see, it's a pretty good matchup for Politoke nonetheless. Mudshot charges energy really quickly, and those Surfs with the added bonus are charging up. And my boy Politoke here is tanking a Focus Blast. So even though he's shot, he's still taking hits. And uh, Surf is going to knock out the Registeel. And we should be able to get to one more Surf here on the Swiss Cache. So Politoke put in a lot of work this matchup, as you can see. And he's actually going to end up winning us this game. Yes, he is. The lick from the Mudshot. Apparently he uses Mudshot with his tongue or something. I365I is up next. And we are going to see a Registeel lead here into the Mantine. So this is not the best matchup, of course. Uh, if the, we're in bubble, we would do a little bit better, but wing attack is necessary for this specific team build. Bring in Politoed here, and um, you know this team. If you look at it, actually, one of the weaknesses to it is that there's no real hard counter for Azumarill. None of these Pokemon really hard check Azumarill. So part of the issue there is that if I get stuck in that matchup, I can only pretty much go with either the Mantine or the Politoed and. I'm not going to win that in most situations. So our opponent does bring in the Haunter here. And those mud shots did chip away a little bit. And I'm going to bring in the Mantine here. And of course I have to shield this first one up, hoping it's a Shadow Ball. It is. And against Haunter, I kind of just want to get the Bubble Beam off because it's doing so much damage. And because Haunter is very glassy, Bubble Beam still hurts a little bit. As you can see, there does a lot. And we're able to actually farm that with the wing attack right after that. Before another charger can come through, so that's really good. Uh, Zoomroll is going to come in, so there's a Zoomroll. This is probably the uh, the best situation we could be in in terms of facing a Zoomroll. Uh, a pretty healthy Mantine with wing attack. Mantine could actually win this matchup depending on shields. Now we were down a little bit in health. But as long as I could get this Zoomroll pretty much out of the way, we'll be good. Because I don't want that Marowak to get locked into the Zoomroll matchup, of course. So I'm just bubble beaming here, trying to lower that attack a lot. And our opponent is decided to stay in this matchup, which is very good. And I'm going to keep going for these bubble beams. Now this is probably going to be another ice beam here, I'd imagine. And at this point, it's not going to be doing nowhere near as much damage because it's been debuffed twice. I think it's been twice, might have been three times. I think it's twice. Either way, uh, we're going for a third bubble beam here. Um, I don't know if that was three. It, it, it might already be debuffed to its maximum extent. I haven't been keeping track of how many bubble beams I've been doing actually. But I would imagine that the next time I'm going to go for ice beam here. And uh, the ice beam actually should put them in KO range from wing attack, assuming that they don't shield this. And likely they're not going to shield it, they're going to think it's another bubble beam. So we do go for ice beam, and as you see, it does knock out the Azumarill there. And the Registeel comes back in, and this is perfect for us because I didn't get the Bulb off, but even though they have a shield left, we just bring in Marowak here, and we can pretty much fire spin now because Marowak's such a wall to the Registeel. So we do end up winning that second game, and we're 2 1 currently with the Polito team going up against Aaron, Aaron 917, and we are going to be leading the Man team into the Azumarill here. So, again, if I want, if the team's gonna have Azumarill, I want to see it in the lead spot here, of course, because Mantine is my best bet at defeating it. So, just gonna go straight for Bubble Beam here, and the Azumarill is gonna let it go through. And a lot of times, these Azumarills in the lead spot are already play rough. So, I did shield this one, and it did end up being play rough. So, that was a debuff play rough, and I still shielded it. And I'm gonna go for the second Bubble Beam here. And it makes sense for them to run the player off in the lead spot in a lot of situations because a lot of times they'll be running into like uh, Umbreon's in the lead or opposing Azumarill's in the lead that are running only Ice Beam. So a player off could be very good in that situation. 
And we're just gonna keep on bubble beaming here. And I want to bring this low enough to the point where my opponent thinks that they could take one more charge move, but it ends up being an ice beam instead. And we end up maintaining switch advantage as a result of that. And maintaining switch advantage against the team leading the Zumbro is very important because it's very likely they're gonna have something weak to Marowak in the back. Uh, you know, Registeel, Marowak, something like that. And as you can see here, we just barely got to the farm down with the wing attack. We got a bunch of energy stored. So this is really good. Alteria comes in, and I'm actually going straight for the Ice Beam here. And this is totally a gamble because if they shield it, we could have got the debuff with the Bubble Beam. If they let it go through, though, it's almost like there goes a huge portion of the Alteria's health. So I bring in the Politoed here. And unfortunately, the problem with going for Blitz, he actually switched out, which was so brutal because I really wanted to land that Blizzard. I don't think they were going to shield that, to be honest. But now I'm in a kind of trickier spot because uh, Whiskash comes in. And Marowak, of course, is going to have a hard time with Whiskash. But Marowak, at the same time, cannot really beat the Altaria. So this game is pretty much over here. I would have to have this Polytoed with enough energy for a Blizzard and then switch out, but I have switch locked, so I can't even switch out here. So I'm trying to buy time by going for the Surfs and then potentially switching out. And I actually switched into the Marowak here. I didn't know that my Mad Team was still available. I should have sacked the Mad Team here. But uh, if I had sacked the Mad Team, we actually may have had to play in this matchup, to be honest. But instead, um, we did bring in the Marowak. And perhaps if we had sacked the Mad Team, we could have got to maybe two Shadow Balls. And that probably still wouldn't be enough. It would be very close to be honest. And as you can see here, I think maybe we could have got two Shadow Balls if we had sacked the Man Team, but it's not a guarantee. And at this point, the Altaria has a lot of energy stored. I bring in the Politoed. Uh, again, they do go for the Charge River away, so maybe I should have brought in the Man Team. But that's fine. And the Man Team comes in has no health. So we do have the Plutonian again. That was very hard to come back from, to be honest. That line there in the end because we kind of had an issue with both of those Pokemon. Uh, B Jiao BM is here in match number five, currently two and two, and uh, Politoed is proving a little hard to use here. But Mantine versus Altaria, this is a pretty good lead for us. And pretty much this, this match totally comes down to whether or not you bait the Ice Beam. So I'm gonna shield this up. And I go for the Bubble Beam first. Now let's see if our opponent chooses to shield this. They do not. They let it go through. Okay, so that's already devastating. And then... On the second attempt... I actually burned my second shield, which is another... Brutal mistake. And it, when you shield the second time, it kind of gives away that you're going to go for the Ice Beam. So... Now they do shield. And I'm in like the worst spot ever here. So, and I didn't even click the bubble beam there either because I wanted to go for another ice beam. So this was probably one of the worst played Mantine team versus Altaria matchups in the history of Pokemon Go. And we don't really have any answer for Altaria here. So, and we have no shields. So I've just put myself in a huge hole here and I don't see any way we're going to come back from this. And I'm going to go for the blizzard here, of course. Uh, definitely not expecting a shield this time. It does go through. So we get rid of the Altaria, which is great. They bring in a Shift Tree, which, you know, isn't the worst thing. Maybe they have, like, Shift Tree and Registeel. Even then, it'd be very difficult for us to win because a Foul Play will destroy Mirac. Hopefully, this is a Leaf Blade that we caught. It is a Foul Play, so... Game over. Whiskash comes in. Nothing we can do. And we're going to end up going 2-3 and three with the Politoed team. A little bit difficult to use, but um, Politoed is pretty good to be honest. He has a pretty decent match against the Registeel. And overall, the Blizzard could catch Altaria off guard. Kind of acts like a Mud Boy, but it's doesn't really have the Mud typing. So it's a pretty cool Pokemon. Uh, it could be usable, and you could definitely find some ways to use it. I might test out some future lineups, but uh, in this line in particular, it's a very like matchup dependent and. Um, yeah, we didn't even run into any electric types, which is very fortunate for us. But either way, if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing to the channel. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.